Welcome back to the Ron Johnson Show. Today, we're going to talk blockbuster trades. Um, everybody knows what happened. Baker Mayfield, as we're on with David Cobb, Panthers running backs, you know, scout, or sorry, running backs, coach helper, and then uh, college scout, pro scout. Baker Mayfield was traded. And it was a friendly trade. I mean, it was I think it was like a fifth round pick or conditional fifth round pick. And the team split the money to make it work. And then he's converting the rest of his contract in order to make this work for the Panthers. He's going to go into camp and compete. But Sam, as I bring Sam extra in, Sam had a question. What is that question, Sam? Because you want to know about Kirk Cousins and, and how this could have worked. Right. So you mentioned it in the first segment. This was the offseason of quarterback movement. What dominoes are going to fall? Is Aaron Rodgers going to retire, demand a trade? Uh, where's Russell Wilson going? Where's Garoppolo going? Ended yeah. up being nowhere. Uh, will the Bucks need a QB? Will the Saints need a QB? Well, you know, the, one of these big pieces was Baker Mayfield. This is probably the last domino to fall now that Deshaun Watson is in Cleveland. Mayfield mm -hmm. wanted out. Um, but at one point, before Watson, before anything, um, I think Kirk Cousins was definitely on the table for some of these teams. And if you're Carolina, Matt Rule's coming off a couple really disappointing seasons to start his tenure in Carolina. If Carolina wanted to upgrade, would they have been wiser to swing a deal for Kirk Cousins? Would that have been a better play than getting one year of Baker Mayfield um, as a quarterback? What do you think? So I look at their salary cap. So I'm guessing they had to split the money because one, they wanted to have cap space. The Browns wanted to move them because they owed Deshaun Watson 230 million, only a million in the first year, but 230 million. So they know there's no way we can make this work where we keep Baker Mayfield, even if Deshaun Watson is suspended for the year uh, because he has settled so many of these suits. Hey, we just got to bite this bullet and have our backup play. I mean, we got to have our tight end play quarterback if we have to, but we, we have 230 million on the books is guaranteed unless there's some kind of ridiculous conviction that comes up with this um, where they're like, whoa, I did not see that coming. We don't owe you anything, bud. We're not paying you. Um, and so when you think about Kirk Cousins, and this is why this is the only way this works, the Vikings would have had to get, in order to trade Kirk Cousins, when you look at his production, what he can be, new head coach, you got to get two to three first-round picks for him. Like Kirk Cousins now has created – um a vacuum i guess you'll say of he just continues to suck money in he's found a way to to to, to up his stock people continue to come to him we we saw the whole you know before when he could have went to the jets you know allegedly took less money to come to the vikings um I, and for those on listen on the podcast not on youtube i did the air quotes of course uh, but with kirk cousins the only way to make that work and, and to not feel like you got absolutely hosed in this deal would be the Vikings would have had to get two to three first round picks like that's when you look at that pick, or at least two first round picks and maybe some conditional picks, um, maybe Sam Darnold, like you take Sam Darnold and you give them Kirk Cousins uh, or the Vikings say, hey, we're going to get Baker Mayfield. So we'll give you Kirk Cousins. We still need two first round picks, though. And then they go get Baker Mayfield for pretty much nothing because it's a fifth round pick and you're splitting money. So now I think because I think the Panthers are only on the books for like five million, uh, whereas the Browns are going to take that other 10. Uh, so to have a five million dollar quarterback with two first round picks in the next two years with this pass game run game, you saw what Stefanski got out of Baker Mayfield. Um, not sure Kevin O'Connell. Uh, is there yet, but I, I think he's pretty close as far as an offensive minded guru. Uh, that would be the only way to make it work. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Panthers went a bad route by getting Mayfield because he was a guy that had flashes of really good football. Like this was a really good team. Uh, it was just the times where he made some really dumb plays, um, and that was one of the reasons why Odell Beckham wanted to get out of there. Like he felt like he was wide open at times, and he was looking to Jarvis Landry, um, you know. And so I, I think that's what kind of started to weigh on that team was just the mistakes uh, Baker Mayfield made. But maybe that's a coach letting him be too much of a cowboy, letting him do what he wants to do. You know, he was, I think he was humbled, um, hopefully humble in the right way. Like Jameis Winston, I think, had the same humble feeling when he left the Bucks, And it's like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not your guy. And I think now you see him with the Saints and he's working hard in the offseason. He's talking about watching film. He's talking about doing the little things in practice after watching Drew Brees. Hopefully that happens for Baker Mayfield. But, no, I, I don't think the Panthers made a bad choice. Like, come after Kirk Cousins, in my opinion, if it's like a couple late-round picks or mid-round picks for Kirk Cousins, that's the dumb trade on the Vikings' part. 
uh, you have to ask for two first round picks for Kirk Cousins. But that's just me. I know you don't believe that, Sam. Well, I think that Cousins could have fetched at least one first round pick, if not more, or or a couple of twos. Like I think that he did have value based on the Russell Wilson trade. I think that sort of set the market. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm Carolina, I, I guess I'm just hedging my bets here because th- th- I don't really see their direction. They've got three quarterbacks. They've got Sam Darnold last year of his contract, Baker Mayfield last year of his contract, third round pick Matt Corral. Maybe that's their play. Maybe they're just trying to create a bridge until Matt Corral is ready. Um, they want to have a veteran step in this year and then you know have Corral be the future. Um, maybe that's the direction they've chosen. It's definitely more cost effective when you commit to a rookie quarterback. You've got more money to play with. Um, once Darnold's money comes off the books, Mayfield's money comes off the books, they're going to have some cash to play around with and surround Corral with talent. 